It aids in the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And so again, these are four vitamins and nutrients that you can find in plant-based foods. All right. And I do have a list here. So if any of you are, are curious as to, you know, you have a certain vitamin in mind, like, okay, what, what kind of foods can I find this vitamin in? And, you know, I can give you some examples as well. All right. Uh, all right. So the first concern that I often come into, you know, when people say, okay, I want to, you know, consider plant-based eating, but I've heard that I cannot get sufficient amount of protein through plant-based foods. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. You can actually get good source of protein from plant-based foods. But again, it's knowing which ones to complement and which ones will give you your full protein or complete protein. And I'll go over uh, what that means, okay? But we know that essentially protein helps build and maintain your bones, your muscles, and your skin. So for those of you that are tuning in, take a moment to check your nails, look at your nails, touch your hair, all of that, or even touch your skin. That All of that is made up of protein. Your, your, you know, our protein is kind of a building block of our body. Um, and there's what they call essential amino acids, uh, meaning that those are amino acids or small little, you can imagine proteins kind of like this big root, or you can imagine that protein is like the head of the household, right? The matriarch of the household. And that protein has little kids, right? It has, you know, little, little bits of protein. And in order to complete the whole family, you need all amino acids to complete that one protein family. Okay. Now with animal products or with meats, you can essentially get that full protein family and you want that full protein family. And if you choose plant-based options, some of them are not complete. All right. Some of them are not complete protein families, but that doesn't mean that you cannot get it or you cannot complement certain foods. Um, so for example, and I always say it too, you know, cause I teach a lot of individuals who speak Spanish, a lot of individuals in the Mexican community. And I tell them, you know, our ancestors, our community, you know, our, you know, people that came before us knew what they were doing because they would complement rice and beans together. And believe it or not, com complementing rice and beans, you essentially form a complete protein just by complementing those two foods. Um, and I don't know if any of you have heard of quinoa. So quinoa, in fact, I actually have a little bag of it, what it looks like. So I purchased this from Trader Joe's, um, but essentially quinoa will give you a full protein, a complete protein. Um, and a lot of individuals are like, oh, you know, I've heard of the quinoa, but I've never tried it. It's a grain, uh, similar to rice, very soft. It doesn't take that long to cook. Um, but again, you get a good amount of protein from quinoa and you get that good complete protein. Um, eggs as well. So if, let's say, for example, I know uh, one of you was, had mentioned, okay, you know, I want to consider vegetarianism. Uh, where should I start? So if you are still or wanting to consume dairy products or eggs, you can essentially get your protein from eggs, all right? You can get the complete protein from the eggs and also some dairy products as well, all right? But that is essentially the protein. Um, you can also find it in to soy products or tofu as well. Um, and chia seeds are a complete source of protein. In fact, I have added chia seeds as well. And you can actually get a good amount of protein. Two tablespoons will give you about five grams of protein. Okay. And some of you might be asking, okay, well, you know, how much protein do I need? And the answer really is depends on what, you know, your level of activity depends on the individual. Cause if, let's say for example, there's somebody that says, I want to try and gain muscle. Right. And you know, should I be consuming just the minimum amount of protein I need, which could be between the 30, 40 range. And I tell them you might need a little bit more. So in that case, you might want to also supplement with some type of protein powder as well. Okay. But typically, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recommends a minimum daily protein intake of 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Now, you know, for those of you that don't like math, I'm sorry, I'm going to throw a math equation out there for you. But if you want to find out your kilograms, you just divide your, your weight by 2.2. Okay, you divide your weight by 2.2, and that'll give you your kilograms. And that's the amount of and then you multiply that by 0.8, and it'll give you the grams of protein that you need. 